Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna to make another mask. Well, not this one, I made this mask like 20 years ago when I went to Burning Man. I'm gonna make Bane's mask from The Dark Knight Rises, and this one I'm gonna be able to put a filter into. I start my pattern by wrapping my head cast in aluminum foil and duct tape. That copies the shape of my head, but Bane's mouthpiece is a bit bulkier than this. So I'm gonna use this after all. The front of Bane's mask has got uh, the same type of mouthpiece, the same basic shape that all the tubes come off of. So I'm gonna use this as the plug to get my shape. I can put this mask back together easily, so I'm not worried about taking it apart. I get the mouthpiece taped on and covered in foil and tape. And I can start drawing the outline of the Bane mask. I have reference pictures on the computer in front of me, which makes it easy to draw out, including some of the seam lines. The foil conforms to the shape of my head cast, and the duct tape keeps the foil in that shape, even when it's removed. Carefully cut along the lines, and I have pattern pieces I can copy onto cardstock for use for cutting foam. The mask is the same on both sides. I only need to make a pattern for the right side. I can just flip it over to get the left. Now these would be famous last words. I'm not as worried about the top of the head fitting as I am the mouth. So I'm gonna put the mouth together first. I use my pattern notcher to cut out the registration marks. I had drawn these lines before everything was removed from the head cast. It's easy to lose your place when gluing seams. These will help keep everything aligned properly. I cut all the parts from six millimeter HD foam. Using a heat gun and my homemade planishing stake, I add compound curves to the flat pieces and then use contact cement to glue the seams together. First thing I notice is that I should have cut an angle on the front panel edge of the mouthpiece. All right, got a decent seal. That's, uh, that worked out surprisingly better than I thought it would. Of course, you know, I'm only holding one piece. I could be very wrong. But so far, that worked out much better than I thought it would. Wow, all right. So I was looking at the mouthpiece a little bit closer and I'm not that happy with the hard edge or corner that I have across the nose and here at the chin. Both of those should be a little bit softer as well as it's pretty round here. It should be a little square on the bottom. I'm gonna be covering it with pipes, but I think the base shape needs to be closer in order for it to look right. So I scanned my cardboard pieces and made myself a set of computer ones where I altered the shape slightly. So I'm gonna cut out another one. I built another one the exact same way, but with my new pattern, and this time I cut an angle around the edges of the mouth panel. That's a lot better. That's a little bit better. Smells like glue. I also made a pattern for where I cut out the mouth. This is where the mesh will go so I can breathe. Before I made any cuts, I decided I needed to sand down the seams, making them as smooth as I could. Then I carefully cut out the opening for the mouth. I decided to add an angle only to the uh, lower lip. Everything else is 90 degrees. What I'm gonna use for the grill that goes behind this is a piece of really old RF shield. This came out of like a 1970s television or something. I've seen this in plastic sheet, I don't have any. I'm gonna be using the metal. I trace the outline to make sure that I cut a piece big enough. And I use a pair of tin snips to cut the RF shield. I overcut it, which gives me a place to glue it on the inside of the mask. I'm going to use the belt sander around the outside because it's still a little sharp, it's not too bad. And then I'm really gonna scuff up this end so I can glue it. I bend the mesh to fit the mouthpiece and contact cement it in place. Like most dust masks, this will need a thin piece of aluminum to get a better nose shape. I just scuff it up like the mesh. Uh, this is a 40 grit sandpaper, by the way. And then I glue it in place. There are thin plates in the mouth that the pipes attach to, so I cut these from two millimeter foam. To make all the pipes around the mouth and the head, I'm gonna use 10 millimeter and five millimeter EVA foam dowels. The black ones are from TNT Cosplay, and the gray ones are HD foam. I wrap pieces of two millimeter thick HD foam around the 10 millimeter dowels because each pipe has a wider base when it actually attaches to the mask. One, two, three, I will need 28 attachment points because there are 14 10, 12, pipes 12, that go around the mouth. 15. Since the white part is just the base, I can just cut out each one. 
and make a highly educated guess on what angle I need to connect to the mask. And then I cut a 45 degree angle on the pipe because they all bend as soon as they come out of the mask. I continue to glue all the bases on, but I don't want to cut out the pipes and connect them just yet because I want to paint the base colors of the mask first. In the round holes of the cheeks, there is one connection that is a little different. It's a flattened disc that the pipe actually attaches to. The straps on the side of the head are cut from two layers of HD foam. The lower layer is just a little bit bigger so it sticks out. I cut the back of the head strap and get it gluing together as well. The first layer for the sides, they glue directly to the edge of the mouthpiece. It's a weird fit since I changed the mouth shape. The second layer is applied right on top of the first, aligning the bottom edge. The side that meets the mouthpiece is cut on an angle for a better fit. I cut a little triangle to fill the gap that was made because I changed the mouthpiece shape. All right, <laughs> I can still breathe. Still smells like glue. Surprisingly, that's all there really is kind of to these. It's very little. There's a couple little other uh, panels that go on the top, some hoses, but that's about it for the sides. So I need to do, I had figured out these panels that go on the sides. And these guys need to kind of go on and span over it, which is why I was holding off, because I knew that this was gonna have to go over both parts. Now I can glue them down and add the pipe connectors to attach them. I use my Dremel to sand back the edge so that they are equal and smooth. And I start checking on how I want to attach the back of the head. So at this point, if I was to paint it and put the, uh, the missing tubes on, I'd be happy. This is the only part I really want. The rest that goes up and over the head, I need to do it because it belongs but it's not important to me. Th this I could actually potentially wear because it's not gonna be really weird and awkward to take on and take off, but uh, I'm gonna make the rest of it because I need to, right? I could make it removable, I suppose, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna bother right now. It would attach, and it would attach, and then this would come up and over with some kind of a strap force itself. Actually, with that kind of a stopper on it, I think that'd probably work. Just put this here. It's happening. Yeah! Okay, it's happening. <laughs> I contact cement the loop side of some hook and loop tape on the sides of the mask and just inside the nose. And I do a quick test with just a strip of the hook side. That about there. Yeah, all right. This I could wear in public and be pretty happy with. All right. I guess this happened. <laughs> I mark where the back of the head overlaps on the mask, and then I make the amounts equal. I think the sides are a little too long because I changed the shape of the mouth and then there's the ears and the head cast that don't flatten out. One solution would be to cut back the sides, but all the detail on there is done, so I'll just push the details that are left towards the back of the head. And it's always fun to test fit. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, I can breathe. I'd have to wear my contacts with this. There's no way I'd be able to put my glasses on over this. <laughs> that wouldn't work, so I can't really drive this silly thing on, but it's all right. And this pulls out from the inside. And actually, the Velcro on the nose wasn't nearly as uncomfortable as I thought it would be, so that's, that's nice. Uh. The details on the back of the head are really pretty slim. There's a few raised panels with some panel lines cut into the hobby knife and heated with a heat gun to make them open up. A couple of circles sit next to the panels. I heated the lines open on these as well. And an odd shaped piece that fits around the rest of the circle. I assume these are the pumps that circulate the venom that's in his mask. Because the ears don't move on the head cast, the mask is not a perfect fit. The front has been painted at this point. I'll get back to that in a moment. 
and I'm going to use 10 millimeter half round dowels for the tubes that go over the head. I'm going to start in the front and cement them over the top of the head and then into the pumps that are on the back of the head. There are a series of clips that look like they hold these tubes in place. So I made a very simple template to mark where to place them. A series of thin strips will make that detail, each one cemented down and trimmed to fit. A wood burning tool will melt the corrugated texture into the half round dowel. Now the smoke from melting EVA is pretty nasty, so if you do this, please wear a vapor mask. I painted the mask early because it would be easier to paint the gray before the pipes were glued down. It would be a serious pain to try and get paint under them. And to my surprise, custom fitting and gluing 14 different pipes to the front of this mask actually went by pretty quickly. I painted all the dowels black, so when I add the silver, the undercoat will be consistent. And then I add the one last little tube that goes behind the ear, uh, part of the return, I guess, for the Venom circuit. That's about it. He's got problems. He's vain. He's got all sorts of problems. And there we go. I gotta finish painting it. When I started painting the mask, the photos I found all looked like the main body was kind of a medium to dark gray. So I mixed up enough paint to cover the whole mask. And it covered really well, one coat for the most part. Once I was fully committed to this color, then I realized the mask should be a true olive drab color. That particular color fools my eyes often, where I think it's gray under most light, but then in the bright sun, I can actually see the green. And this happens even in pictures. So I'm stuck with a gray mask, which is fine. In the cheeks, those little discs are metallic red, and the mesh is a steel or gunmetal silver. Most of the details are a darker silver color, but it looks light because of the dark gray. I had black washed some of the details so that when they're dry brushed to the silver, everything would kind of stand out better. And a few of the pipes are bright silver. And I also add a little here and there of the bright silver to kind of break it up. And all the clips on top of the head are a grayish navy color. If I cut a couple layers of t-shirt material and put it inside the mask, it'll be acceptable to wear as my social distancing face mask. Most of the materials I use are available to order and you can have them shipped right to you. I put a list in the links in the description. So I'm really happy that I made the top piece on this a convertible. That I can take this piece off and I don't have to wear it with the rest of the mask. Because this looks great on a bald supervillain. But if I was to wear this when I go pump gas, it's just going to mess up my hair. Now, the simple Velcro strap that I've got in the back is actually really easy for, for putting the mask on and taking it back off if I need to. The three-point system that this has, it's not so much. I mean, it, it works, but it takes a little more effort to really get it to line up and, and be right. But if you want, you can make one of these for yourself because all the templates that I made, I put a link in the description so you can download a PDF and print them out for yourself. And you can make your own Bane mask. You can make it out of neoprene, you can make it out of leather, you can make it out of EVA foam. You can make it out of just about anything that you think you can make it out of, because I know there are lots of different ways that you can make something. But this is how Odin makes. You merely adopted the foam. I was born in it, formed by it. Put a thing out here, it could be the movie version of Cerebro, right? That's about all it was. <laughs> it's a little more than that, but not much. Well, that fits. All right. Does it look like I have underwear in my head? Yeah, more or less. I want to thank Max Kirkland, Kobe Tang, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.